engineering and construction have always been at the forefront of nation building. And for decades, the DMCI group has been leading this charge, taking on the biggest and most complex challenges facing our nation. From constructing vital infrastructure, to extracting precious commodities, to providing affordable power and clean water. We are dedicated to finding transformative solutions that drive progress and benefit society. But we are more than just a business. The DMCI Group is committed to being a partner to our host communities, a steward of the environment, and a builder of our nation. Our commitment extends to promoting gender equality and creating an inclusive workplace where everyone can thrive and succeed. With our team of dedicated professionals and skilled workers, we bring the extraordinary to life, driving the Philippines forward. To learn more about our company and how we are making a positive difference in society, visit www.dmciholdings.com. The DMCI Creed We believe that construction is a noble profession whose activities are vital to economic development and national progress. That fair competition is essential to the growth and stability of the construction industry. That a contractor's primary responsibility to his client is to give his best in faithful compliance with their agreement. That labor and capital should cooperate with one another so that labor may live with dignity and capital may find its just rewards. That the ill-gotten violates business ethics and the ill-conceived wreaks havoc on the public good. That the ultimate objectives are to serve not only man, but humankind and to build not only an enterprise, but an institution that will serve society.
Please stand by. The event will start in five minutes.
please stand by. The live stream will start shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine National Anthem. Bayang magiliw, perlas ng silanganan, alab ng puso, sa diblim mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng magiting, sa manlulupig, di ka pasisigil. Sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bugaw, may dilagang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal. Ang kislap ng watawat mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning. Ang bituin na araw niya, kailan pa may di magdidilim? Lupa ng araw ng walhati pagsinta, buhay ay langit sa piling mo. Aming ligaya na pag may mga api, ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo. Good morning and welcome to the 2023 Annual Stockholders Meeting of DMCI Holdings. The Chairman and President, Engineer Isidro A. Kunsunhi, will now preside over the meeting. Good morning to our dear stockholders. This meeting is hereby called to order. Mr. Secretary, please confirm that the definitive information statement and notice of today's meeting were provided to the stockholders of record. Yes, Mr. Chairman. In accordance with the requirements of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the definitive information statement and notice of today's annual stockholders meeting were submitted to the PSE ads posted on the company's website and published in print and online format in at least two newspapers of general circulation at least 21 days before today's meeting. The agenda of today's meeting is currently shown on the screen. Mr. Secretary, do we have a quorum for the transaction of business? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Based on the certification of the corporation's stock and transfer agent of the total 13 billion 277 million 470,000 outstanding common shares and entitled to vote, 10,690,964,472 shares, representing 80.5% of the corporation's outstanding common capital stock and entitled to vote, are present through remote communication or by proxy at today's annual meeting of the stockholders. A quorum therefore exists for the transaction of business. Mr. Chairman, I would also like to inform our shareholders that all the incumbent members of the board of directors are present today via remote communication from their respective locations. Mr. Chairman, we will present later the various agenda items which were approved by the stockholders through proxy voting and voting in absentia. We will now proceed with the management report. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman and president, Mr. Isidro A. Kutsunhi, will now render a report on the 2022 operations and current situation of the corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the board, fellow shareholders, and esteemed guests, welcome to our annual stockholders meeting. As we review our 2022 performance and discuss the outlook of our company, it is important to understand the context in which we operate. In recent years, we have witnessed extraordinary global challenges that have profoundly impacted the economic landscape of the Philippines. Despite the pandemic, geopolitical tensions, and global supply chain disruptions, the DMCI group has shown remarkable resilience and adaptability navigating through this difficult period. Last year, we achieved record-breaking results across key operating and financial metrics. Because of the improved productivity, strategic market pivots, 
and upbeat prices for coal, nickel, electricity, and real estate projects. Our full year consolidated top line improved by 32% to an all time high of over 142 billion pesos. Excluding non recurring items, our consolidated core net income expanded by 80% to 31.2 billion pesos. Our group net income and liquid assets also grew double digits to historic levels of 31.1 billion pesos and 28.4 billion pesos respectively. With these results, we're able to increase our total dividend payout by 25% to 1 peso and 20 centavos, our highest yet. This translates to a dividend yield of 13% based on an average value traded for the year of 9 pesos and 28 centavos. In all, we returned 15.9 billion pesos to our shareholders for a dividend payout ratio of 92%, well above our dividend policy of 25% for the previous year's core net income. Reflecting our robust financial performance and exposure to surging commodity and electricity markets, the MCI share price soared almost 56% in 2022, ending the year at a 52-week high of 12 pesos. This raised our market capitalization to over 159 billion pesos. Consequently, after more than a year of absence, the MC rejoined the PSC index last February 6. Let me now turn to the 2022 performance of our portfolio companies. Our top contributors during the year were Seminar Mining and Power Corporation, DMC Homes, and Mainilad. These three companies accounted for 92% of our core net income. Seminar's contribution more than doubled to 22.7 billion pesos, driven by all time high coal production, high spot electricity sales, and elevated selling prices. DMCI Homes contributed 4.5 billion pesos in core earnings, a 2% uptick due to better selling prices and higher other income. Mainland net income contribution declined by 6% to 1.4 billion pesos. Because of higher operating costs primarily from power, repairs and maintenance, and chemicals. Despite the depletion of its Barong mine in 2021, DMCI mining contribution improved by 7% to 1.3 billion pesos because of higher selling prices. DMCI power delivered an all-time high contribution of 742 million pesos, 28% higher than last year due to higher electricity dispatch and average selling price. The Amponsuni Inc. contributed 587 million pesos, a 55% rebound from last year. This was due to the completion of building and infrastructure projects. The stellar performances of our companies also gave rise to record gains for the government and our host communities. Our contributions underscore our commitment to inclusive growth and positive social impact. Summarized on your screen are some of our material contributions to our key stakeholders. For the third straight year, DMCA Holdings and Seminara were included in the Bloomberg Gender Equality Index. Of the 484 index members, only four are from the Philippines. We take great pride in being part of this select group. DMCA Holdings also received a two golden arrow award, while SMPC was conferred a three golden arrow award. Because of their strong showings in the 2021 ASEAN Corporate Governance Scorecard Assessment, our companies were also recognized in the 2022 Asia Money Poll of Outstanding Companies in Asia. DMC and SCC won as the most outstanding Philippine companies in their respective categories. Late last year, I got the shock of my life 
when I was selected as the 2022 MAP Management Man of the Year, which is the highest recognition that a Filipino management professional could ever receive. The award still humbles and baffles me, but I'm sincerely grateful to the 2022 Board of Governors led by President Dave Singson, as well as the members of the Search and Judging Committees for the great honor. At this point, let me update you on some promising developments about our businesses. First, we have initiated discussions with the Department of Energy on the possibility of amending our coal operating contract. We hope to have more clarity on the future of our COC within the year. Second, DMCA Mining has secured the needed environmental compliance certificates to more than double its nickel ore production in Zambales. The company is in the process of securing the needed auxiliary permits to ramp up production and operate the new mines by early next year. With these developments, we can start shipping more and higher grade nickel ore in 2024. Third, we plan to construct wind and solar facilities in Semerar Island through our renewable energy arm, the MCA Power. Our goal is to secure a long-term power supply agreement with the local electric cooperative, which will lead to a reduced generation cost and more competitive tariff for the island residents. No firm timeline has been set for these RE projects, but we hope to move forward on them by early next year. As we look ahead to 2023, we expect a blend of challenges for our business portfolio. Because of moderate global economic recovery, persisting geopolitical tensions, and elevated domestic inflation, price volatility, cost inflation, high interest rates, and the lingering impacts of the pandemic should affect some of our businesses. However, we also see bright spots in power and water businesses. We should benefit from the recovery consumption and better prices. To counter price volatility, SMPC and DMCA Mining will focus on optimizing their production by reining in costs. DMCI and DMCI Homes will continue to face headwinds as high interest rates and hybrid work models temper demand. Inflated raw material costs could also erode their margin. To navigate these challenges, we will explore new product formats such as leisure and premium offerings. We will also employ value engineering techniques to identify cost-efficient options while exploring alternative business models such as joint ventures to further optimize our operations. DMCA Power is set to expand with its commissioning of the additional plants in Palawan and Masbate this year. These developments will contribute to our power generation capacity, reinforcing our leadership position in the off-grid energy market. Mainilad, on the other hand, is already benefiting from the five-year rate rebasing adjustment, which began in January 2023. This adjustment should drive revenue growth and capex spending in the West Zone. All this considered, our company's growth in 2023 will likely be muted. But I remain optimistic about our ability to adapt and persevere. Our diverse portfolio, sound financial position, and commitment to operational excellence give us a strong foundation to navigate the volatile business environment and continue delivering value. In conclusion, I would like to acknowledge and thank those who made our historic 2022 performance possible. Our devoted employees for their hard work and commitment in driving our company's success. Our board of directors for their support and valuable guidance. Our shareholders, regulators, 
and business partners who have placed their trust in us, enabling our resilient growth. Our host communities for their understanding and cooperation in fostering a harmonious relationship. Lastly, our other stakeholders, including customers and suppliers, for their enduring interest and loyalty. Your faith in our company has allowed us to set multiple milestones during a particularly challenging year. With your continued support, we can forge ahead with our strategic initiatives and build a stronger, more sustainable organization. Thank you for joining us today. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For better appreciation of the company's operations, the shareholders were given access to the definitive information statement. For better use of time, we requested the shareholders to send by email their questions prior to this meeting. The first question is, do you see DMC expanding into other engineering and construction related industries in the next five years? I don't, I don't think DMCI will expand in any other industries that is not related to its core competence. However, our approach to these basic industries will probably different. We'll probably segment the market differently and probably approach it uh, more to developing the project rather than being just a mere contractor because the value added in construction is probably not as good as the value added when you are part of the development process of the project. And we might be participating as well as equity partners in PPP projects of the future. Now that the government has improved the contracting uh, uh, conditions between government and the private proponent in PPP projects. Our next question is, are you partnering with a foreign company for your solar and wind projects in Semerara Island? We do not intend to partner with any foreign company in the solar and wind project in Semerara because the phase one will only involve what will be consumed by the, by the residents and by the company. So these are probably about five, 10 or 15 megawatt projects, which can be locally financed and locally uh, done. So it's probably too small to invite foreign companies. Our next question is, in the SCC ASM, you said the transfer of the MCI mining to Semarara will no longer push through because of friction cost. How about the transfer of the MCI power to SCC? I think we have the same issue with the MCI mining and the MCI power. Uh, the friction cost of transferring the MCI power from the MCI to Semerara is probably not worth the value added to the, to the shareholders involved. Uh, in any case, the MCI power is a small percentage of whatever business Semerara has. So when you consider the frictional cost involved in the transfer, Semerara could probably grow in other areas with less friction cost and more upside than acquiring DMCA power. Our next question is, when do you expect the MCI and the MCI homes to return to pre-pandemic levels? Construction will probably have a little longer time to go back to pre-pandemic level, simply because of the ongoing recession and the high interest costs. The MCA homes, however, will probably be back to pre-pandemic levels faster than construction because we are entering into different market segments, both geographically and in the price levels and format, real estate formats. We're developing high-end and lower-end formats. So we'll expand 
We started funding the coverage, the market coverage of the MSI homes, which we hope to expect uh, to offset some of the negative effects of high interest rates and inflation. As for the last question, do you see the other businesses displacing Semerara, the MCI Homes, and Manila as the top contributors of the company? Over the next couple of years, I see DMSA Power and DMSA Mining to grow faster than the rest of the businesses we have in the group, simply because we have more permitting coming in and we expect even more over the next uh, year or so for DMSA Mining. And as well as uh, there are a lot of shortages of electricity in the areas we operate, uh, Palawan, Mindoro, and Masbate, that I believe that the MSA Power is in a very good position to be able to fill these gaps in supply in these three islands we're currently operating. So I'm very confident the two companies will grow faster than the rest of the other companies in our, in our portfolio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the other questions, which we are not able to read today, the company will respond individually by email. Further, we shall also include these questions and answers in the minutes of today's annual meeting. Mr. Chairman, shown on the screen is the summary of the tabulation of votes cast in absentia and by proxy in favor of the following items of the agenda. One, approval of the minutes of the previous annual stockholders meeting. Number two, the management report. Three, ratification of acts of directors and officers. Number four, appointment of external auditors. As detailed discussion on each of the above agenda items was provided in the definitive information statement and the rationale for the agenda items was also provided in the notice of today's annual meeting. Please also note that the online voting is still open until 10 a.m. today. The additional votes will be included in the total votes and will be disclosed today. Considering that more than 50% of the outstanding common capital stock voted in favor of the proposed resolutions, the same are deemed approved. Mr. Chairman, for the election of directors, the corporation received a total of six nominees for regular directors and three nominees for independent directors, namely regular directors Isidro A. Consuni, Cesar A. Binaventura, George A. Consuni, Maria Edwina C. Laperal, Los Consuelo A. Kunsunhi, Maria Cristina C. Gotianon, Independent Directors, Roberto L. Panlilio, Bernardo M. Villegas, Cynthia R. Del Castillo. The stockholders were able to cast their votes on the election of directors in absentia or by proxy. Please also note that the online voting is still open until 10 a.m. today. The additional votes will be included in the total votes and will be disclosed today. Based on the tabulation of votes, cast in absentia and by proxy, the nominees receive the number of votes cast opposite their respective names as shown on the screen. There being no other valid nominations, the said individuals are hereby elected as directors of the corporation for the current term. Are there any other matters to be taken up? There are no other matters listed on the agenda. Since there are no other matters to be taken up, this meeting is now adjourned. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's meeting.